Welcome into the Inside Scoop. This weekend, one of just three remaining uncommitted five stars will come off the board as Daytona Beach mainland defensive lineman LJ McRae is set to make his final decision. He'll announce it on Saturday. And where the six foot six, 275 pound trench monster will be going? Well, it's probably going to be one of five teams either Georgia, Auburn, Florida, Florida State, or Miami. You guys, let me know in the comments section below where you think LJ McCray is going to go. We're going to cover that on the show, but also today we got major recruiting developments in the Georgia, FSU, and Oregon markets. And also, another top 25 QB is on the show. This time it's Ryan Montgomery, four star arm out of Finley, Ohio. He's, he's coming off a big SEC visit and will be making a decision in the not-too-distant future. All right, recruiting fans, do me a favor right now. We're about to turn this channel up, so I need you to hit subscribe right now. Look, almost to 20K in, almost, in six weeks. Let's get there. Thank you. All right, let's talk LJ McRae's recruitment for a minute. We're about 48 hours out from his big decision. And if I had to break it down to you, like I said, there's five main teams in the mix, but I think it's broken into two tiers. So as it stands right now, I feel like you have Miami and Auburn in the mix, but sort of on the outside looking in on the top tier of teams that include Georgia, FSU, and Florida. Now, let's look at the recruiting prediction machine. It shows UF with 37%. Georgia right there at 24% and FSU at 15%. Do you guys agree? Because I don't know if I necessarily agree with this. So tell me if you guys agree with this. Like I said, let me know in the comment section below where you think LJ McRae is going to go. All right. How else can we kind of determine where he's going to go? Well, I, I was talking to the beat writers that cover all five of these teams. And I sort of noticed that they all feel some level of confidence in the school they cover. Some might be more confident than others, but all five have some level of confidence in the team that they cover landing LJ McRae. So I wanted to find out if it's not the school you cover, it's not the school you cover, where do you think LJ McRae will end up? Now here's what they had to say. Uh, if you would have asked me Friday, I would have said Florida. But if you mm -hmm. ask me right now, and you are, I'd probably say Florida State. I think Florida State's made a move on both of these schools, and I'm not saying he, that's where he's going. If you're going to take Georgia out of this, I would I would go with Florida State right now. I think they've got some some buzz with it. And that last visit could have been crucial. Georgia went and saw him a couple of weeks ago, so they can't go see him this week. Uh, that they've used that visit up uh, going down there, so. You look at this, and um, it, right now, a little bit of buzz starting to, to crank up for Florida State. Where do you think he would go if it's not FSU? That's a tough one. It's really close with, for me for the two or three. I think there's several teams in there, but I think I think if I was picking one, I would say Georgia uh, as far as that other team, just because I think that's a team that's really uh, a school he's enamored by. Obviously, the two-time division champions, they do well with defensive linemen. If you look at their pedigree, you know Jalen Carter being the most recent one that you know uh, really exploded. So I think. I think that's the team that if I was picking one, it's close between them and Florida. If he's not going to Florida, I think he goes to Florida State. And I say that, and even get Danny back to about March time, you know, talking to people around, people would ask me, hey, where do you think he's leaning? And I always would say it's very close from Florida and Florida State. They're both in-state. They both got, at the time, about the same amount of visits. But it just seemed like those were – I felt like Florida State got a better jump in his recruitment compared to Florida early on. And we'll see if that bolts true. But also – Getting him for an in-season OV when all the other finalists didn't, um, mm -hmm. I thought that was a really good strategy by FSU if he does go there. I know some people might look at that, look at that and think it's kind of risky. These other schools get him for OVs, but you want to wait it out. I think that shows the confidence in Tallahassee as far as the season they thought they were going to have, and they thought that atmosphere would definitely be a huge factor, and that's what I'm looking at. I, I, I never thought the kid would leave the state of Florida. Um, I'm back and forth with Florida, Florida State. I know Chad Simmons on threes, Chad Simmons. Thinks uh, Florida State's got a lot of buzz in there. I have no reason to doubt him. Uh, for me, it's always been Florida, Florida State. Um, and, and that's just kind of gut feeling there, just kind of reading the leaves from the tee. All right, there you go. Hearing from the recruiting experts themselves on if it's not their school, where do they think he's going to go? Now, of course, LJ McRae has not informed any school of his decision. So as of right now, this is all pure speculation, which we love to do on the show. So let's look at one more graphic that sort of tells the story of LJ Re McRae's recruitment, and that is his official visit schedule. Now, we look at June 2nd, 
UF. They set the bar high with that first visit. June 9, he was at Miami. June 12, Auburn. June 16, Georgia. Now, it was a very busy month of June for LJ McRae, and a lot of people thought that a decision could potentially come in the summer, although he was always alluding to a fall decision. But just the way the summer went, you guys remember, guys were committing left and right all over the place across America. It just felt like LJ McRae might come off the board early, and that's why that October 7 visit you see there with FSU kind of lingered, and people didn't know, like, is FSU going to – is he going to actually make it to FSU, or will he decide first? So there was a bit of a risk there with the Seminoles locking in that October fall visit, but I think that is why – you are hearing so much buzz around the Knowles right now because they were able to get that last official visit. They also got him on camp. Uh, well, he wasn't on campus. He went to Orlando, the neutral site game, to watch FSU LSU. Obviously, FSU won that game. So if you look at his visit schedule, you know, that October 7 trip to Tallahassee kind of stands out there as an outlier. But as of now, there's still no no expert predictions on crystal balls on 24-7. No expert predictions yet on the on three recruiting prediction machine. I might put one in, though, and I'm leaning towards FSU. We'll see what happens here. You guys, though, you're the real recruiting experts. So let me know in the comments section below where you think LJ McCray will land on Saturday. All right, let's keep the show moving. I want to talk a little Georgia recruiting next. The Georgia Bulldogs are just over two months away from closing in on the number one class in the 2024 cycle, but there's still a few more pieces to fill before Kirby Smart and his staff are happy with what they got. And in this video, we're going to focus on big potential flip target. Plus, this Saturday, five-star defensive lineman LJ McRae will announce his commitment. Will the dogs land yet another five-star prospect? We'll find out. But first, Georgia fans, do me a favor right now. Hit that subscribe button. Look at this. We're trying to get to 20K. Dog fans, help us get there. Subscribe. Thank you. Let's bring on my guy, Rusty Mansell from Dogs HQ. And Rusty, this week, it's a Georgia buy, so, so you have some time off. But we know what the Georgia coaches will be doing. They'll be recruiting. Uh, where are we expecting the UGA staff to pop up on their bye week? Because we know they'll be at some Friday night games. That's something I'll be watching for sure. You always kind of say, hey, where are they going to end up? I did confirm a couple of visits. And uh, you look at Mike Bobo, who's going to be up in the Boston area seeing quarterback commit, 2024 quarterback commit, Ryan Puglisi, who's off to a great start this year. So mm -hmm. Mike Bobo will be up there to see him. You look at Dale McGee, who will fly all the way to California. Uh, you know, he wants to keep tabs on the number one running back in the country, Nate Frazier, who's verbally committed to George as well. So we'll have more as the week goes on. But you can tell on late Thursday night, early Friday morning, uh, Georgia staff will hit the road. You always, Josh, it's that week you kind of want to say, hey, who are they going to see? Because if a name pops up, you know what that means. Those two people have been talking. So that's what we're going to watch as the week goes on, especially in the 2024 class. Yeah, you get a good feel for who's a priority. And like you said, in the 2024 class, if there's ever going to be a late offer to go out, it's going to be yeah. in one of these evaluation yeah. situations. So 100%. not saying that that's a possibility, but it's something yeah, that yeah. happens yeah. when the coaches 100%. are out on the road. Okay, Rusty, let's get into some of these final targets for the dogs. And I want to talk Cam Michael. He's right there in Statesboro, Georgia. And mm -hmm. are the dogs fading here? Because, you know, he's a two-way athlete, plays both offense and defense. Georgia offered him as a DB, but are they still recruiting him as one? Because we know Tennessee, Colorado, some others are offering him some playing time on the offensive side of the ball. I think Georgia's in a spot to where they're like, look, you just come here and we'll figure out the best way. We'll figure out offense or defense. Listen, Georgia recruited Miko Hardman, and for a year he played corner. He just didn't like it. He just wasn't natural. So they switched him over to offense. And, uh, where he was more natural. So I think yeah. with Cam Michael, George is recruiting him really hard saying, hey, you know, if you come here, we'll figure it out once you get here because there's only so many of these big time guys that can run like him with verified track times. I wouldn't say George is fading. They're still in communication. I think Tennessee's a team you kind of watch with this. Uh, Colorado, obviously, you got to take them serious with everybody uh, now and get him on campus. But he's been very quiet. He's closed his circle mm -hmm. down real tight, you know, these last couple of months. So, but I am confident there's still communication between he and Georgia, and I think Georgia's got a shot here. We'll see what happens down the stretch. Yeah, I think ten. I agree with you. I think Tennessee made a move. Colorado obviously made a move, and then Georgia. Yeah. I kind of think those are the primary three. Um, 
this Saturday, LJ McCray, the top rated defensive line, the top rated uncommitted mm. defensive lineman mm. in America, a newly minted five star here at on three. He's going to make his decision, long awaited decision on Saturday. And I think UGA has kind of been the team that's most consistently thought of as the leader for LJ McCray. Of course, he hasn't said that. I'm just talking about in the industry yeah. because McCray yeah. has not tipped his hand at all. But what are you hearing is we're about three or four days out from this big decision. Well, I'll tell you what I'm hearing is crickets. And that's what I've been hearing the last six weeks. So I'll tip my cap to LJ McCray. He hadn't told anybody anything. And you just kind of try to put pieces of the puzzle together, Josh. You've been on this side of it, covering it. But mm -hmm. I can tell you this, as we sit here and take this, I'm starting to hear a little bit more buzz about Florida State. They got the last visit with him. They got that last official with him. Uh, they, they seem like they're trying to make a move here at the end. I don't think that – no. I don't think there's a school right now that has talked to him privately and he said, look, I'm coming. But I am starting to hear more about Florida State as this thing approaches. Georgia and Florida have been battling, it seems, back and forth with this young man for three or four months. I'm confident in this. Wherever this guy goes, he's going to be a hell of a football player because there's only two or three per class, in my opinion, like this. This guy's six foot six, can move, rush to pass or set the edge. You're talking about a freaking football player? Sign me up for this guy immediately, whoever lands him. Yeah, uh, Georgia fans are familiar with his type. There's been some big bodied athletes like yeah. him yeah. coming through Athens in their last couple of years. But like you said, it's a very tight race. And I can say from my perspective, I've been trying to find out, you know, tidbits here and there. And the one thing I think is consistent across the board is LJ McCray has not informed any coaching staff one way yeah, or another surprised. if he's coming or going. State, but this will be something, Josh. You'll shoot videos on the rest of the week. I'll do notes on Dogs HQ the rest of the week. Chad Simmons and I will talk 45 times the rest of the week. This and will we'll be, still won't know. There's all, there's all, you still won't know. This is really one of those, Josh, it's really one of those where we'll watch it with everybody on Saturday and go, oh, okay, well, that's where he was going. So, uh, we'll piece as much together as much as we can. I'll be surprised if he tells anybody, especially in the media, uh, where his final decision is. Yeah, I agree with that take. I do feel like it was a um, primarily Georgia-Florida buzz going into yeah, the weekend. Yeah. But, of course, Florida State hosting him on an official visit, not just an unofficial visit. So he was there the entire weekend. They were able yes. to pay for everything. They were able to roll out the red carpet. And yep. I think that that move, because everybody else hosted him on official visits during the summer, but that move – was risky for Florida State to delay that official visit because at the time you didn't know if he was going to commit before then. But it looks like yeah. you know this recruitment has gone all the way until the end of October, so and we'll I'll, see what I'll happens this with, Saturday. I'll, yeah, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I'll be honest with you too. Florida State, the season they've had, I don't think they were probably in this thing as a serious threat. But uh, what they've done, and, yeah. and and look, they're like, look, we got a visit left. Won't you come here? I think they that really worked to their. But if they land this kid i think that really worked to their advantage to have that official left late uh because everybody would have saved it if they thought it was going to be the most important thing right. so uh but you look at what florida state's done that's certainly if they land him uh hasn't hurt them one bit right yeah so we'll see and i think at the same time like a team like miami you know you were talking about florida state what they've done on the field i think miami's kind of slid a little further back because of the the kind of the losses and how they've timed up with his that's decision so a lot of teams, Auburn also has a bit of confidence heading into this weekend. Georgia, Florida State, Florida, Miami. Those are the teams, Rusty. We'll just have to wait and find out. Saturday, LJ McCray makes his decision. Thanks for coming on the Inside Scoop, talking some UGA recruiting today. Appreciate it, Josh. Saturday's primetime matchup between Florida State and Duke. Yeah, Florida State and Duke is a primetime matchup, but – it also means that Tallahassee, it'll be a destination for top recruits. And in this video, we're going to talk about the important recruiting weekend going on. We'll also hit on a few flip targets on the radar, and we'll get into intel on a certain five-star that is announcing his decision on Saturday. But FSU fans, do me a favor right now. Hit that subscribe button. We just started this page about five or six weeks ago, and we're almost to 20K, so help us get there. Hit subscribe. Okay. Let's bring on Mike Langston from Warchant, get this thing started. Mike, we got a big visit weekend in Tallahassee, but we got to talk LJ McCray first. The five-star defensive lineman announces his decision on Saturday, and this is probably Florida State's best and only chance at landing a five-star on that D-line, but there's some competition. Miami, UF, Georgia, and Auburn are also involved. We're two or three days out. What are your sources saying? 
Yeah, it's uh, it's been an intense one. It's been a roller coaster with with L.J. McCray obviously coming off that official visit to FSU, which I think was key because he hasn't experienced that yeah, being around the players. And I think ever since then, I've I've heard a shift with with FSU where it's I've I've heard the most buzz I've heard out of FSU, you know, as far as their confidence of mm-hmm. you know they feel like they're in a good position, and I agree with that based on the intel I have. I think uh, I think as of today on Wednesday, as we're doing this, uh, I think FSU is the team that I hear trending. Um, I hear that more consistently. Um, I think I think it's not a done deal. So I'm not saying that that's my going to be my 100 percent pick. But I do think if I was making a pick today, I would probably side towards FSU at this point based on the intel I've gotten. Yeah, and I think, like you said, nobody truly knows. L.J. McRae, no matter who you talk to, nobody truly knows. He hasn't informed a, a, a staff yet right. either way of where he's going. So if it weren't FSU, let's take the Knowles out of the picture right now. Where do you think he would go if it's not FSU? That's a tough one. It's really close with, for me for the two or three. I think there's several teams in there, but I think I think if I was picking one, I would say Georgia uh, as far as that other team. Just because I think that's a team that's really uh, a school he's enamored by. Obviously, the two-time division champions, they do well with defense alignment. If you look at their pedigree, you know Jalen Carter being the most recent one that you know uh, really exploded. So I think I think that's the team that if I was picking one, and it's close between them and Florida. I think Miami and Auburn are also teams that are in there, but mm-hmm. I hear more about Georgia as the other team uh, as of this week. Um, now, maybe that can change again. I don't know. But that's kind of where I said that if it wasn't them, I would at, at this point, I would say Georgia. All right. Well, we'll find out on Saturday. Now, the next two guys that I want to talk about, we're going to transition to important visitors on campus this weekend. And they're both two rival flip targets, both on the defensive line. So based on what happens with LJ McRae on Saturday, these guys, now FSU might not have room for them, or they could become really important if LJ McRae ends up going to Georgia or Florida or Miami or Auburn. So who am I talking about? I'm talking about defensive lineman Nasir Johnson. He's committed to the Florida Gators. And then defensive lineman Artavius Jones, who's committed to Miami. Both four-star prospects, and both are expected to be in Tallahassee this weekend. So let's start with Nasir Johnson. Where are things with Florida State and him, and is he a priority for the Knowles right now? Yeah, I think he he's a big priority for them. Uh, they've been working on ever since he committed to Florida. I think he's firm in his pledge to Florida, so that's not going to be just an easy one where you get in there and FSU's cooking and and FSU looks like the better in-state team than any any team out there in the state of Florida. And certainly that's an attraction. But I think they're going to have to work and show just you know him experiencing the feeling while he's on campus. Certainly it's going to be an electric atmosphere. Everyone that's been the doke on a night game for a big top rank game, it's certainly that's going to grab his attention. But I, I think they're certainly working for him. I think they like him. But I do think they're, they're going to have to work and, and, and show him something different than what he got at Florida. Keep in mind, FSU was his first offer. So there's a lot of you know emotional ties and feelings of, of how he feels about FSU. But I think uh, – they will have to put in the work and they will have to show him something that he hasn't seen uh, while he's been at Florida. All right. Now let's move on to Artavius Jones. He was in Tallahassee, what, last weekend? So what's yes. going on here between Florida State and this Miami commitment? Yeah, he, he lives in Bluntstown. So as you know, that's like 50 you know miles away or whatnot. It's close. It's easy to get there. But he hasn't really visited for a game. And then all of a sudden last week he pops up. I see him there. I'm like, whoa, okay, Artavius Jones is here. And they've been consistently – that's been the guy that they focused on, I think, you know, as far as uncommitted guys outside of LJ. He's been the main guy that they've really worked hard on. Odo Higgins has been very involved with that. Um, he loves Odell. Um, uh, what was interesting is – Usually when Artavius visits, it's kind of like he's in and out. Sometimes he sneaks out the back. Sometimes you don't get him. This one, he was more – around the crowd, you know, mm-hmm. doing some chops, being around, taking pictures, may even coming up to the media and talking to us after the game. It was much more accessible where he, it's more like you felt like he was invested in, in what the product was. Hmm. Um, certainly had a lot of nice things to say. Coming back for the Duke game, I think that's a major, major development for FSU, and they're still going to probably get an official visit out of him as well. So uh, that's a guy to really uh, keep your eye on. 
Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's going to be a star-studded sideline right there before the game. K.J. Bolden expected in, five-star Charles Lester, Jonathan Daniels, Luke Cromenhawk. But is there anyone else that might be uncommitted that's on your radar that could show up on Saturday? How's the start of college football season been for you guys? I know the games have been great, but you know what's not great? Finding last-minute tickets. Finding tickets before game can sometimes be a nightmare. And do not let this be the way that your season goes. That's why I'm here to tell you about game time. It's the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the big-time matchups. Game time will get you to this year's biggest college football games with elite deals on last-minute tickets and the best price guarantee. Do not stress over getting into your team's favorite game, the biggest rivalry game of the year. There's only so many games you can go to, and you need to get these tickets at the best prices. Game time is the place for last-minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Guys are terrible at that. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Game, ta- game time, they have deals on tickets Even after an hour after the game starts, it is the place to get last-minute ticket deals. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets on all sports and even concert events. So here's what we're going to do. Snag the tickets without stress with GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code INSIDESCOOP for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and use code INSIDESCOOP. For $20 off, download game time today, last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Yeah, I think uh, running back Osman Cromo is one that they're very high on out of Lee County. I went to see him early this year when they played uh, Colquitt. He ran for like 200 yards, uh, and that's a very good Colquitt team. And uh, I don't think they have a running back that's like him on the roster either. He's a physical kid, but very good, and you can put him in pass situations, but uh, big big just long athletic kid kind of eddie george like when you watch him run uh just uh long strider and just a special talent that we already know that fsu has a really good running back room but i think Mm -hmm. that's the guy they've really him and alvin henderson have been two of the guys and and i i think this is a guy that has been to fsu the most alvin visited last weekend but you know austin's been there a lot to fsu so they've certainly that's one that they're they're heavily targeting as far as being a the guy, uh, as far as visiting. A lot more other guys that I think you already touched on that are visiting. I think Elias Williams, tight end, 2025, uh, that's committed to Georgia. He's expected to be there. Some really good offensive line for 2025. Four-star Solomon Thomas, four-star Max Buchanan. Um, those are some of the guys that I think uh, are expected to pop in. And then the other one that's kind of intriguing to me is Jaden Perlott. Committed to Georgia, 2025. That yeah. we we've talked about him. I think a lot of people have put, you know, some picks in, and and that's a guy that I'm going to keep an eye on to see how that visit goes. Whew. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a busy weekend. But before I let you go, FSU fans wouldn't let me do this without asking you, <laughs> Mike. Who do you have on commit watch this weekend? Yeah, I I haven't heard like there will be a for sure commitment, but I would say the guy to watch for me is Artavius Jones flip candidate uh flip. i have them on flip watch i even put that on my list when i did it on there just because when you go there back to back weekends josh you, you always and like you said when you said you've been doing this follow the visits and when you start following back to back visits and miami's hosting probably their best opponent they're going to play and he's not going to that game against clemson yeah i think it says a lot if he shows up uh, I think uh, he's certainly a guy you have to keep on flip watch. And I, I would also throw in a, a little bonus one, 2025 five-star Armando Blunt. Watch out for FSU there. I'm hearing some, you know, some positive trickles, a little F- FSU there with Miami struggles. So that's a guy that I'm kind of keeping on as the season goes on that I think they're not done. They're still working on him hard. So that's one to keep an eye on, I think, for the rest of the year. Man, there is a lot going on with this one. And Warchant.com, you guys will be keeping these updates rolling throughout the weekend. So if you got any questions or want to see if these guys actually make it to campus, be sure to check out Warchant. Mike, busy weekend. Take care, man. We'll talk to you probably on Monday to recap all the action. Appreciate you. Yeah, hopefully hopefully I can come up for air on, on Monday. But uh, it's going to be really busy. A lot of stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, that late primetime game. Good luck to you. I tell you, man. Thanks, Josh. See ya. 
Good thing recruiting doesn't always correlate with wins and losses on the field because even though the Ducks lost to Washington and it might feel like things are down, if you look at recruiting, you would have no idea. It's red hot right now in Oregon. So in this video, we're going to talk about the big five-star offensive tackle on campus this weekend and the potential of adding another elite pass rusher as well. But first, Oregon fans, hit that subscribe button for me. We're trying to grow this page. We need Duck fans to be a part of it. Hit subscribe. Okay, Justin Hopkins from Scoop Duck. Let's get right into it. Five-star Jordan Seaton, the number two rated offensive tackle in the country. He's making his much-anticipated official visit to Oregon, who he deemed as his dream school growing up. Now we both know what that could mean. But what is the goal here with hosting Seton on this official visit? Yeah, so, I mean, here's the good news, right? Oregon's only got a handful of uncommitted guys visiting this weekend, which means, you know, Jordan Seton's a priority no matter what, but you can devote a lot of attention to him, right? Dan Lanning can spend quality time with him, recruiting him. I know the Ducks are bringing some of their other offensive linemen that are committed already, and, you know, they'll try to build that bond with them. This is your chance to show, uh, you know, a lot of folks do do recognize that Austin Stadium is a, is a really uh, great atmosphere, a great place to see a football game. I think that's what you're going to show if you're mm -hmm. Oregon. You know, you want Jordan Seaton to see what, you know, hey, there is there is a legitimate uh, football atmosphere on the West Coast. Uh, you're going to really show him those relationships that you've tried to build through the phone and, you know, and video calls and other things. You know, you're going to really put those face to face. It's just all those things. I, I would imagine Seton will be bringing family with him, mom, dad, coach, whoever. You know, the important people will make the trip with them. And the key there is you want to make them feel comfortable, right? They mm -hmm. want, you know, you want mom or whoever. Hey, look, he's going to be 3,000 miles from home, but look, he's safe. It's comfortable. We'll take care of him. You know, he'll grow, he'll mature here. So those are some of the things that Oregon needs to do because you, you've got to attack those th things head on. Otherwise, you're just going to kind of fall behind in the pack and Seton's going to stay somewhere in the in the southeast down there. Yeah, and a lot of competition for him now. He's all he's originally from Baltimore area, Washington, D.C., but he's playing his football in high school down at IMG Academy in Florida. And there are a lot of teams in the southeast involved with him. Of course, the Florida Gators, Alabama, uh, you got Ohio State's going to probably get him in on a visit as well. Florida State involved there. So Jordan Seaton getting to Oregon this weekend. I think I exchange I exchanged a few texts with him yesterday, and I think this is a big opportunity for the Ducks. He's looking forward to just what you said, Justin, that hype around the game and being there in that game day atmosphere. He's heard a lot about it. He told me he can't wait to experience it. So we'll see what he has to say coming out of this one, but I think it's a big opportunity. Now, Solomon Williams will also be on campus. He's the other official visitor this weekend, and he's been trending toward Texas A&M the past two to three weeks, but that, that comes as Texas A&M season starts to spiral. So another great timed visit for Oregon. What are your sources saying on Solomon Williams out of Tampa, Florida? Inside Scoop fans, I got to tell you about something that has changed my fall football season for the better, and that's HelloFresh. I've been trying HelloFresh recently, even as recently as last night, and I have no idea why I waited so long. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip the trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's no America's number one meal kit. And let's face it, we're busy during the fall. You guys know the routine. You work all week and then you watch football all weekend. A busy fall schedule doesn't always leave you time to go to the grocery store. And with HelloFresh, you don't need to spend all evening in the kitchen to whip up a wholesome meal with their quick and easy recipes and 15 minute meals you can get a tasty dinner on the table in less time than it takes to get takeout or delivery it's also cheaper a new season calls for new meals and HelloFresh has a fresh fall lineup of delicious dinners and more to choose from take your pick from 40 weekly recipes that suit your lifestyle from veggie to family friendly to fit and wholesome this week, I was in the kitchen chefing it up like you know I do. And when I get home from work, the last thing I want to do is really go to the grocery store. All the ingredients, they're right there at my doorstep. I didn't have to buy. I didn't have to wait in line. I didn't have to throw out all the extras that you always have. And anything I cook is delicious. But I got to tell you, HelloFresh makes it so easy and so fast. I don't know if I'll be going back to the grocery store anytime soon. So here's what I need you guys to do. Go to HelloFresh.com forward slash 50 Josh Newberg. 
and use code 50 Josh Newberg for 50% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, I have no idea why I waited so long. Well, there's no time to capitalize and one of your opponents is down, right? And I think, you know, I think that's what Oregon's doing here. A little different with Solomon than with Jordan Seaton because Solomon yeah. has been to Oregon before. So he at least kind of knows what to expect. He has not been there for a game experience. So that's what you're selling here if you're Oregon. You want Solomon Williams to see what we just talked about, Autzen Stadium, you know, the fan support, all of that being there. This will be a different visit for him, but he's at least met the coaches in person, you know, seen all the facilities, done a photo shoot, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and again, like Jordan Seaton, these are currently the only two uncommitted 2024 guys that we know of. That could change as recruiting goes. It could change in an hour after this is, you know, aired. But um, that gives the staff a lot of time to spend with Jordan Seaton, a lot of time to spend with Solomon Williams. And again, potentially, you're you're looking at two guys that you say, hey, look, you want to become a really good player, Solomon or Jordan? Guess what? That guy's a really good player on the other side of the ball. If you both come, you can practice with each other every all year long. So, you know, I think there's a little bit of selling there for Oregon when you bring those two guys in and you kind of say, hey, look, you want to get better. you got to practice against the best. And, and, and what a way to sell Jordan Seaton and Solomon Williams on that. <laughs> yeah, and it's great a great weekend for them both to come in because there's going to be so many committed prospects on campus. You get that peer-to-peer -peer recruiting going on as well. So we're about 48 hours away from recruits arriving on campus. So is there anyone else on your radar that you're tracking that could be in this weekend? Yeah, you know, there's going to be a list of 2025s that come in. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of Pacific Northwest recruits that make their way down. You know, we talked about some committed guys coming in. Devin Brooks, Fox Crater, a couple of the Oregon commits will be in town, and it's great to have them. You know, I would kind of keep tabs to see if maybe a running back like Jason Brown makes it down this weekend. He's been trending Oregon's direction a little bit. I know he watched uh, Oregon and Washington last week in Seattle. Um, Elijah Rushing, I know we've talked about him. Yeah. You know, does he make a surprise appearance? We, I, You know, it's, it's certainly possible. There's a lot of steam around Oregon with him right now. So, you know, those are maybe a couple of the guys that I would instantly point to. But, you know, otherwise, I think it'll be a, a kind of a quaint but solid weekend for the Ducks. And it is homecoming, so there'll be a lot of pageantry around this weekend's game as well. Yeah, well, let's talk a little bit more about Elijah Rushing. He decommitted from Arizona about two weeks ago now. I had him on the show earlier this week. I'll drop that in the description. You guys can check that out. But it was tough to get a whole lot out of him, but he did have something to say about Oregon. Can the Ducks close on him before another team jumps in this and becomes a real contender? I think if you're Dan Lanning, that's the hope and the goal, right? Hey, you know what? We may have got him to decommit or he decommitted, whatever. Let's strike while the iron's hot. Let's get him in the boat before he goes and takes a visit to Tennessee and 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 thinks about it or Notre Dame or whatever. Right, yeah, Notre Dame you know, could be a threat. Over and holds off. Yeah, strike strike while the iron's hot. So I, I think Oregon uh, would love to do that. I could see them, you know, potentially getting him on campus sooner than later, which is why I mentioned him as a possibility this weekend. But of course, nothing is confirmed. Uh, yeah, I, if you're Oregon, you've got some momentum and, and I know that you know about it, but in recruiting, momentum is everything. You've, you've landed a, a pair of really strong defensive commits, five star Aiden Breland. You know, guys see that they know they recognize when a team is recruiting hot and usually want to be a part of a contender. So I think for Oregon, this is your time to really capitalize with Elijah rushing. And like you said, kind of shut the door on everybody else. Yeah, because it feels like at this point, you know, he's been back on the market for a week or two, but there's really not another team buzzing besides Oregon. So. Well, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but we'll see what happens. Big weekend up there in Eugene. Justin Hopkins, keep us updated on all the latest developments. And thank you for stopping by the Inside Scoop. Thank you. We have a special guest today on the Inside Scoop. We have Ryan Montgomery, four-star 2025 QB out of Finley, Ohio. He goes six foot four, 210 pounds. He's the number 17 ranked QB in the class. And here are his social handles. You guys follow him on Instagram and Twitter because his career is just about to get started. All right, let's bring in Ryan Montgomery. Ryan, how you doing? I'm doing great, Mr. Newberg. How are you? I'm good, man. Glad to have you on here. Now, let's get right to it. South Carolina visit over the weekend. You got to see a great game between two teams that you're highly interested in. What were you paying attention to during that South Carolina-Florida thriller? Yeah, for sure. I mean, first and foremost, I mean, 
Um, it was just great to get back down to South Carolina. It was actually my first game visit, and it was as advertised, the atmosphere and everything. So I really enjoyed my time there. Um, but I was really focused on, obviously, the offense, um, Coach Loggins' play calling, um, Spencer and his playmaking ability, and just what situations Coach Loggins was putting him in. And, you know, I was very impressed with how Spencer played, how he controlled the game. And like I said, like I said, it was just a fun game to go to. All right. So I know South Carolina and Florida are heavily involved in your recruitment, but who else are you considering right now? Yeah. So Auburn is, has come on um, pretty hard on me now. I'm planning on going to visit them next weekend, the 28th. So um, that's what we're planning on. Also Penn state as well, looking at a possible game visit in November there and you know, Georgia still recruiting me pretty hard and um, Michigan as well. All right. Now you said you want to get back to Auburn or you said you are going to get back to Auburn here soon. What other programs do you want to make it to their campus this fall for a game? Yeah. So like I said, Penn state, I want to get to a game in November there. Um, we're looking at the Michigan game there, um, possibly a Michigan game and you know, we might get back down to Florida or South Carolina, just depending on um, my schedule and the situation and stuff like that. Right. Now, I know the Gators are heavily involved with you as well. What do you like about Florida and who do you talk to the most over there? Yeah, so I'm in contact the most with Coach O'Hara, who's pretty much the quarterback coach slash quarterback analyst. Um, you know, I'm, call, I'm on the phone with Coach Nape all the time. Um, you know, it's just a, I just have a really good feel about them. Um, it's definitely a huge getting a lot of family vibes there. And um, I just love what they're doing with Graham Mertz right now. Yeah, very impressive game. Um, yep. What about South Carolina? You were there visiting them. You were on their sidelines for that game. Where do the Gamecocks stand in your recruitment? Yeah, they're definitely up there on my list. Um, they're a school that is going to be in it till the end for me. All right. Now, what? when is the end? Because I've been talking to 2025 quarterbacks, talked with Antoine Hill earlier this week. He's going to decide in December, January. Bryce Underwood has said January. George McIntyre has alluded to maybe a spring decision. So what does your timeline look like? Yeah, so I'm hoping to have this all wrapped up sometime in the winter. I'm looking at either January or February. Okay, so maybe three or four months for you. Uh, what are you looking for in a program? Because you're making all these visits. So when you're on campuses, what are you looking for? Yeah, definitely the relationships. Um, you know, as a quarterback, you got to have um, relationships with not just your position coach, but everybody on the staff. Um, you know, academics is big for me and my family, um, just how the team's doing and the plan they have for me. All right, good. So. Were you a fan of anybody growing up, you know, as a kid? Who did you root for in college football? Yeah, so growing up, I was a big Ohio State fan, big Buckeye fan growing up. Yeah, and uh, now the Buckeyes aren't really in your recruitment now? No, not anymore, no. Nope. All right. Um, Ryan, we'll wrap it up with this. As a quarterback, what do you think the strength of your game is? Yeah, I think I have a lot of physical attributes, but I think my um, biggest strength is um, the mental aspect of the game for me. I think I can process very quickly and easily, um, make very decisive and quick decisions. And, you know, I have a pretty good understanding of coverages and what the defense is doing. All right. Well, Ryan Montgomery, thank you for joining the Inside Scoop. You're going to Auburn next and then... Penn State, Michigan. We'll be following all these visits and your recruitment. Thank you for dropping by the Inside Scoop today. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that content, be sure to subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. We have a new page dedicated only to recruiting. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now.